Welcome to our Link G4X Training Part 11. In this video, we're going to take a look at working with our fuel injectors and our fuel injector data characterization that we have to program with in our PC Link software. So we're going to start this video off taking a look at the basics of fuel injectors, understanding the two different types that we'll work with, a low and high impedance, and then how to properly make sure that injector is going to be set up for the driver type on the G4X box that you're gonna be tuning with. So I'm gonna show you how to use an Excel spreadsheet calculator I'm providing with the training course so you can determine if you need a ballast resistor between the power source and the injector so we don't damage the injector driver working with. And then we're gonna be moving into understanding the injector characterization data. That's gonna be things like our dead time, our short pulse width adder, and our minimum pulse width. We need to make sure these are programmed properly on a large injector. It can make the difference of the vehicle running properly or having erratic fuel delivery. There's a lot of things to cover here. So let's jump into our video so we can check all this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be taking a look at programming our fuel injector characterization data in our PC Link software, as well as taking a look at a general overview of the different kinds of injectors we may find and the different types of injector drivers that we're going to have in the Link G4X system that you're working with. It's gonna be important to understand the fundamentals here so that we have things configured properly mechanically and physically so that when we're going in and doing our control and programming in our fuel table, the injectors are gonna be controlled properly. So let's start our video off with taking a look at the basics. There's two different types of injectors that we're going to find, a low impedance or high impedance injector. Now, impedance is gonna be a fancy word for resistance and we can determine what type of injector it's going to be based on measuring this resistance through the injector windings with a multimeter. It's actually really simple. So if you don't know if it's a low or high impedance injector, get a multimeter out, set it onto resistance check, so it's gonna be registering in ohms. Take either probe of the injector and touch either terminal that we find on the actual injector body. There's gonna be the two prongs, either gonna be there, one is gonna to go to power, one's gonna to go to uh, the trigger signal from our uh, link. So we can just take our multimeter, touch them on either, doesn't really matter which one you uh, touch it on. We can measure the resistance. If we find that the resistance is less than six ohms of resistance, it's going to be a low impedance injector. If we find that it's six ohms or higher, it's gonna be thought of or known as a high impedance injector. So most older injectors, um, Bosch, uh, RC, um, and even uh, a Rochester precision style injector, um, those are gonna be 80s, 90s injector technology. They're gonna be a low impedance injector. So those are gonna meter around two to, two to three ohms, two to four ohms is pretty typical. Um, when you're measuring the resistance with a multimeter. Now, if we're talking about a modern day fuel injector that you'll find, so injector dynamics, FIC, DW, those are all gonna be typically high impedance injector. All injector dynamics are high impedance. FIC produces a low Z or a high, C inje high Z style injector. High Z is high impedance, low Z is low impedance. So they actually offer both. They're gonna be telling you what the injector is, but it's always good to measure it with a multimeter so you know what the actual impedance is going to be on the injector that you're working with. So um, if we know then what the impedance is going to be or the resistance on the injector, we can more appropriately determine what kind of injector driver is suited to the injector itself. So if we're taking a look at our lower tier link boxes in our G4 line, our G4X lineup, we have an Atom Monsoon Storm and the Extreme Plug and Play options. Those are going to have a saturated style fuel injector driver and the saturated inj injector driver is meant to control a saturated or high impedance style fuel injector. Now, if we take a look at the screen here, we're gonna find um, the saturated driver is pretty basic in the way it works. We're gonna be commanding the injector to switch on. It's gonna ramp the current up to the max current and then it's gonna hold it there. And then it's gonna be dropping off when we switch off the injector. So it's pretty basic. It's gonna go on and off and it's gonna be bringing the current up. And the max current that we wanna see used is going to be two amps on that uh, saturated style driver. Now, the problem is going to be if we have a low impedance injector, it's gonna draw more current than a high impedance injector. And we need to limit the current going to our saturated driver. And in order to do this, we're gonna to have to use a resistor between the power source to the fuel injector and the injector itself. So we can wire in ballast resistors um, and the exact amount of ohms or resistance on those resistors is going to depend on what type of impedance that we measure through the fuel injector. So what we'll find is, again, if you have low impedance injectors, you have one of these lower tier box, it's gonna be designated with a saturated driver. We need to go in and figure out what that uh, resistance needs to be that's gonna be wired uh, between, again, power and the actual injectors. We can see 
uh, right here on coming up on the screen. So what I've created is an Excel spreadsheet to make this much simpler so you can determine the exact resistance you need to have. You usually want to have a little bit higher resistance what we'll calculate in our Excel, sp Excel spreadsheet calculator here, but it'll give you a very good idea of what to expect. So if we jump in here, um, Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.